Come on, I don't have an instrument, but I can make a noise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all you ants. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Oh, come on, this is your week. This is going to be a week of breakthrough, a week of deliverance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at the person around you tonight and say, you don't have any clue how much God loves you. Oh, come on, feel good in God's presence tonight because that's why we are here. Feel better in God's presence because that's why we are here. Come on, we can't earn it. We can't deserve it. It's all because of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah and hallelujah and hallelujah. Come on, shout and give God one more praise in this place if you can. Amen, amen and amen. While we are standing clapping, we have... Uh, many, many churches with us tonight, so we are the host church tonight, so keep on clapping. Welcome to the many thousands there in Bloemfontein, where the revival started, Johannesburg, East Rand, uh, Kroenstad, Welkom, Cape Town, Stellenbosch, Paddle, Mitchell's Plain, Kales River, Hermanus, Worcester, False Bay, Somerset West, Malmesbury, West Coast, Dublin, Beleto, Peter Marisburg, Wartburg, East London, Port Elizabeth, George, Richards Bay in Pankeni, Nels Braid, Bolaquani, Rustenburg, Potsdam, Suwetu, Lady Brand, Bethlehem, Kwakwa, Harry Smith, Uppington, Kimberley, Katu, Misiru, Vintage, Sokobon, Hokaniba, Kabarone! Oh, come on, we can have a revival with tens of thousands of people part of this meeting in other CRC churches tonight. Amen. It's good to be alive. It's good to be here tonight. And I see some people here from England. You've come early already. How many? from England yet tonight. Come on. Anybody from England? Come on. Oh, come on. Make the loudest noise. I want to hear how you praise God there in England. Hey, we love you this year, but next year we're not going to like you in the World Cup, okay? Let's just get it right. No, I'm just playing with you. We love all of you. Amen. We have special guests here tonight before we introduce our speakers. Oh, let me first welcome everybody on live stream, everybody on YouTube, on every social media platform. We welcome you tonight in the name of Jesus Christ, Facebook Live. We welcome you tonight. And then our Daystar viewers, we welcome you tonight. And every platform that you are watching, again, your pastor will be preaching tonight. We are very excited. We were so blessed this morning. And tonight's going to be a blowout. I know it's still holiday. Thousands of our students are on holiday, but that's fine. You are here tonight. God's got a divine appointment with you tonight. Our television audience, we welcome you tonight all the way from Tuane, Pretoria, the capital of South Africa. We know God's going to come right where you are, and your life will never be the same in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. And then uh, we are very, very happy to have our Springbok rugby captain here tonight. We are so proud of Sia Kulise. Come on, give him a big shout out. Oh, come on, Boka, 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 Boka. I know we shout for Jesus, but we can't shout for these champions in the name of Jesus. Come on in. And with him tonight, we have Tendai Matwaria. He's the... Hey, hey, I was coming down my office steps and... And I heard this booming. Hey, you're going to preach, brother. I'll prophesy over you. I'm telling you now. He's got this preaching voice. I mean, he was talking and the whole building was shaking. I was coming down there. I thought God came to visit the place. Okay. Okay, he's married, so settle down. Okay. Calm down. Bongi. Where's Bongi? Bongi. He's here tonight. And... Uh, uh, Ronell and Cheslin Colby, we welcome you tonight. Come on, all these Springbok rugby players that are not ashamed of the gospel, we love you. And it's amazing when people stand for God. When you stand for God, God will stand for you. God will take you where you cannot take yourself. You stand for God in every platform God gives you, and God will take you higher than you can take yourself. Amen. God's got great plans for you, great dreams for you, and that's what Dream Week is all about. I know we're not starting, but it feels a little bit like it. It feels like this place wants to explode tonight. God's got great dreams and great plans for you. And this is what Dream Week is all about. God's going to come and breathe upon you. God's going to revive dead dreams. God's going to open wombs. God's going to revive people. God's going to bless people. God's going to heal people. A mighty revival is going to break out this week. I'm telling you in the name of Jesus. I know it. Oh, I want to run around the building. I'm telling you. I put on my tackies tonight not to be religious. Praise God, die daar van stil gedienstige doe is voorbij. Hier is nie begraafplaas nie. Amen. 
eerste dag van die week het Jezus uit die dood het opgestaan. So we can be happy. As much as we shout for the Springboks, we shout for Jesus more. Amen. Then of course we've been greatly blessed today by the ministry of Pastor Marcus and his beautiful wife Joni. So if you will all sit down just for a moment, everybody, thank you. I, you like a bunch of horses in a stall and I can identify with it. You just want to run, but let's just run to the right place. Okay, so we want to honor the founding pastor of Daystar, which currently is by far the biggest television, Christian television in network in the world. So we honor you again. Will you please stand so everybody can see you, Pastor Joni. If you will stand, give her a big, big, big warm welcome. Big God bless you. If you've never watched her show, Joni Table Talk between five and six in South Africa, you want to watch that. And we want to thank them again for broadcasting Dream Week this year on Daystar television platform. Isn't that amazing? Come on, let's give them a big, big God bless you and a big thank you. And then with them, their children that serve God, Rachel and Joshua. Will you please stand so people can know who you are? And then uh, Suzanne and Jonathan, if you will stand also, that's uh, the firstborn. And then we have Rebecca and also Jonathan. Where are you? Stand, please. Amen. Give them a warm welcome. He's an American, but he played rugby. Can you believe it? First American I met that understands rugby and think that rugby is cooler than American football. So there's a home for you in South Africa. Okay. You come home. Come home. <laughs> you don't belong there. Come home. Come, come home. Can you stand with me, please, right here in Pretoria, in all our churches across the country? I know uh, Tuesday is going to be an absolute amazing time. We've had an amazing time. Okay. Um, you can sense God's presence in this place. I believe God wants to do something here tonight. He always does. And we can't have a better preacher than we have here tonight. A man of God, greatly anointed, not just in television ministry. That ministry is an absolute miracle of God's favor, God's blessing. But Pastor Marcus is one of the greatest preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I want us to put our hands together and give him the warmest and the biggest welcome to the CRC platform tonight. Come on all over South Africa, put your hands together and welcome Pastor Marcus Lamb. Hello, Pretoria. God bless you. You may be seated. My goodness. I tell you this, you are a turned on, on fire, full of faith, rowdy bunch, and I am beyond privileged to get to preach to you. I've got two special things I'm going to tell you in just a moment, but I do want to say that Joni and all six of our kids will be out in the front after the service. Joni will be autographing her book, Surrender All. It tells some of our personal story of how we met and got together, some of the early beginning days of Daystar. And then there are stories from great men and women of God that Joni has interviewed down through the years. It'll make you laugh, it'll make you cry. It deals with every area of life, marriage, children, parenting, finances, health, on and on and on. And the latest Daystar Singers CD. So they'll be out there signing those after the service. I want to say I sense the presence of God so great. And for our Daystar audience, Joni and I and the three little lambs and their spouses, we are in Pretoria, South Africa at Christian Revival Church under the leadership of Pastor At and Nyreta Boshoff, a church that is on fire, full of the Holy Ghost and the Word of God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to share a prophetic word that the Lord gave me last Sunday morning for this church. Some of you heard it, but a lot of you didn't. And for all of our other campuses, I am thrilled 
that you are there watching live through video um, fiber feed. This church is so on the cutting edge of everything, you would put to shame even many churches in America. So I want to commend you uh, by the Holy Spirit. Here was the word that the Lord gave me. And I would say that there's been less than two handfuls of times in my whole 45 years of preaching that God has given me a prophetic word for a church. So here it goes. God spoke to me that he is raising up a radical army in Christian revival church, CRC. But it is much more than a revival. It is a movement that is going to sweep across the globe. And God has called you to be a part of it. And it is going to take the anointing of the Holy Spirit to accomplish what God has for CRC. And I want you to know that I believe in it so very much. And I'm so thrilled about the continued expansion, particularly the great new cathedral that is under construction in Johannesburg. That when I was praying this morning, and it took all I could do to not tell you this this morning, but the Lord said, no, you wait till Sunday night and tell it then. And what I'm going to say is in Rand. Now, Pastor Boshoff and I were on the golf course and he was asking me and I thought he was saying rain. He said, do you have any rain? Uh, rain? It hasn't been raining. But he was saying ran, but I guess it was in South African. Maybe it was in Afrikaans and I just couldn't understand it. But Daystar wants to give in rand or rain this amount, uh, 1,417,000 rand for the new Johannesburg Sanctuary. And, uh, <laughs> amen. And I will make sure that it gets here before I get gone. I will contact Daystar tomorrow and they will get it wired and it will not be a check that's in the mail. It'll be a wire transfer that will be in the bank. Now, if you have your Bibles this evening, I want you to turn in the Old Testament to the book of Isaiah. Now, can y'all understand me when I talk Texan? See, y'all would say Isaiah. Isaiah. But I say Isaiah, kind of like we're saying it. Isaiah chapter 10, verse 27. Maybe you can uh, use your smartphone, your iPad, whatever, to look and find it. When you have found Isaiah 10 and 27, wave your left hand at me. Have you found it? Oh, some of them don't know which one's their left hand. We'll pray for that in the altar service. <clears throat> and it shall come to pass in that day a specific day that his burden will be taken away from your shoulder and his yoke from your neck. In other words, the yoke will be broke. Woo! For the yoke will be destroyed. Why? Because of the anointing. So I want to preach. I've only preached this one other time in my entire life. And I didn't want to preach this, but this is what the Lord said on Sunday evening to all of the campuses across South Africa for CRC. Preach on the subject, the breakthrough anointing. The breakthrough anointing. Now, what is a breakthrough? In man's definition, it's an instance 
of achieving success in a particular area or activity. But God's definition of breakthrough is a sudden burst of the revelation knowledge of God that propels you through every line of Satan's defense. Did you hear what I just said? It said Satan is on the defense. You're not on the defense. So if Satan's on the defense, that means you're on the offense. That means you need to get up and attack the devil. You need to invade his territory. And you need to possess the land for the glory of God. That's why that new sanctuary is being built in Johannesburg that will hold thousands of people because you are possessing the land. Now, Daystar was built on the breakthrough anointing. In 1994, during a live television broadcast, I went into a trance for two hours. If you watch the video, you cannot see me moving. You can't even see that I'm breathing. It is though I am dead. But I was caught up into heaven, actually at the pearly gates. And I was met there by the Lord. And there were several things that he said to me. But at this point, we only had one TV station. We were not a network yet. But the Lord spoke to me and it was really neat because I didn't see his mouth or lips move, but I could hear his voice in my mind. That was how he was able to communicate with me. And he said, if you will not be ashamed of the Holy Spirit, and if you will promote revival, then I will give you many TV stations. You will be on many satellite systems and cable systems. And I will cause your television ministry to go into all of the world. So Jesus prophesied it before it ever even became a reality. And ladies and gentlemen, the same thing here. Pastor at Boshop has a break through anointing on his life. CRC has a breakthrough anointing. That's why it's important what church you go to and what pastor you sit under and that you learn from and you glean from because you want to have somebody who hears from God and has a touch of God on their life because that same anointing will eventually come on you. Somebody say amen. And you can have a breakthrough anointing and you can experience it here tonight. And I'm going to go ahead and tell you in advance, I'm going to lay hands on several people tonight and pray for a transference of the anointing that's on my life. Now, this message is not long, but let's go now and let's look at some of the unusual ways that the anointing was demonstrated in the Bible. Moses, the great deliverer of Israel, was anointed when he stretched forth his rod and the Red Sea parted and the children of Israel walked over on dry ground. I like to say he stretched forth the rod of God. Somebody say rod of God. <clears throat> Elijah the prophet was anointed when he prayed and fire fell from heaven. I believe we can still pray and have that kind of impact. When you were praying here at the altar and the pastors were ministering to you, you could feel the fire from heaven that was falling upon the people. Brother, do you think I'm going to sweat so much that I'm going to need this thing? I mean, look at this. It's, I could hide behind that thing. Glory to God. I know Bishop Jakes has one of these. My friend, get ready, get ready, get ready. I probably will not be confused with Bishop Jakes because he's a, he's a lot better preacher than I am. Samson, a judge of Israel, was anointed when he took the jawbone of a mule 
and he killed 1,000 Philistines. It wasn't because Samson was so physically strong or was so brilliant and tactician as a fighter, but it was the anointing that makes the difference. Somebody say, the anointing makes the difference. David was anointed in 1 Samuel 16, 23, when he played his harp and King Saul was healed and made refreshed and the evil spirit departed from King Saul. Let me tell you something, CRC. We need anointed musicians and anointed singers. Why? Because you touch the heart of God. In Psalms 22 and 3, Oh, thou who lives in the praise of his people. When you need God to come down, begin to bombard heaven with praise first. And God can't take all of that praise. He has to come down in the praise of his people. And it's the singers and the musicians who prepare the way to make it easy for people to receive the word of God. We don't need to be performance oriented. Yes, we need to do so with excellence. We need to practice and prepare. Josh, you've never heard me tell this story. My kids may have heard it maybe once, if so, many years ago. But I was a young boy, 12 or 13, and I was the organist for our church. And I was called on on a Sunday morning to play an organ solo during the offering. And you might think during the offering, there wouldn't be any anointing, but there is when you do so with the right motivation and you give to God with all of your heart. And I remember I felt led of the Lord to play the old rugged cross. I didn't sing couldn't sing then, can't sing now. If they, Nareta, if they ever come out with a waterproof microphone, because I sound pretty good in the shower, because the sound bounces off that ceramic tile, when they get a waterproof microphone, then yours truly will record a, a CD, but not until then. But anyway, the Holy Spirit anointed me as I played. And the power of God fell on that congregation of about 200 people. And one dozen people on their own without a preacher calling them. But the Holy Spirit was calling them. Walked down an aisle, knelt at an altar, and gave their hearts to the Lord. Why? Because there was an anointed musician who was playing as unto the Lord. And not unto the people. Jesus was anointed in John 20, 22, when he breathed on the people. And the Bible says they received the Holy Spirit. Peter was anointed in Acts 5 and 15 when his shadow fell across the sick. The blind would see, the deaf would hear, and the lame would leap for joy because anointing was so great in his life, it permeated every part of his being that even his own shadow had the anointing of God in it. Paul, the great apostle, was anointed. Can I be anointed dressed like this? I don't know whether I can or not. I hope I can be. I don't usually dress like this. But Joni said, you got to be casual now because all the rest of the people will. So I'm being a good, submissive husband. I'm submissive to Pastor Boshop. He's got his T-shirt and his tennis shoes on. Some camera, that Boone camera should get a shot of Pastor Boshop's tennis shoes. I'm not preaching another sentence until you get a close-up. Is that cool or what? Paul was anointed in Acts chapter 19, 11, and 12 when handkerchiefs and aprons were taken from his body. Today, we would call them prayer cloths. They were laid on the sick and the afflicted. 
And they were healed and delivered and set free by the mighty power of God. Why? Because a man was so anointed that even coming in contact with his body, there was healing power that was transferred into those claws because of a breakthrough anointing. But I've got some good news for you today. I realize that most of you and many of you in the other uh, locations, you are not preachers. You don't have to be a preacher to be anointed. You can be an anointed wife. You can be an anointed husband. You can be an anointed parent. You can be an anointed student. You can be an anointed musician. You can be an anointed worker on your job and let your light shine with marketplace ministry. And yes, you can be an anointed business owner so that after you take care of your family, your vision is how can I help to fund the end time harvest? Now let's walk down through the pages of God's Word and let's see what it says about the anointing. In 1 Samuel 16, 12, and 13, God said unto Samuel the prophet, Arise and anoint him, for this is he. Now the significant thing about that was is that Jesse had eight sons. And he paraded out the first seven, one by one by one. They were not accepted by God. But there was a little fella. He was the youngest. He was the runt of the litter. He wasn't like Rocco. He was a little fella. And anyway, some said that he had red hair and freckles, so he wasn't the most handsome. But he knew how to pray. He knew how to have the anointing. So much that when the bear came after the sheep that were entrusted to his care, he had enough anointing to defeat the bear and to defeat the lion. And God said, this is the one, Samuel, that I want you to anoint. When Samuel took the horn of oil, the oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. I love what it says. And anointed David and the Spirit of the Lord came on David from that day forward. There's an anointing you can have from God that never has to leave you. That you never have to be away from it. But it dwells in you. It resides in you. It resides on you. And whoever you come in contact, they're going to come in contact with the anointing that's in your life. David said in Psalms 23 and 5, he anoints my head with oil. Psalm 72 and 6 he shall come down like rain upon the grass, like showers that water the earth. Psalms 92 and 10, I have been anointed with fresh oil. Let me tell you something about oil. If it is not taken care of, it can begin to stink. I mean, you get olive oil and if it's old and it hasn't been stored properly, you take the lid off and it smells awful. Well, some people, they may even have a stinking anointing. If, it, if you can figure out what in the world that means. In other words, they're stale. They're dry. They've lost their joy. They've lost their song. They've lost their smile. They've lost their spark. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to redig the wells of revival and to get a fresh touch from God. God, give me a fresh touch of your anointing on my life. Isaiah 59, 19. When the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Now, Rebecca, my darling, you are a Bible school graduate. So let me just teach you a little something here right now. I submit to you that we should change the interpretation of that verse. Instead of saying when the enemy comes in like a flood, we should say this. When the enemy comes in comma. Everybody say comma. When the enemy comes in comma, like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. I believe the flood should be coming from the Holy Spirit, not coming from the devil. Hallelujah. Woo, 
Brother Marcus, that's good preaching, son. Keep on preaching it there at CRC in Pretoria, South Africa. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, if people couldn't preach behind this pulpit to you incredible people, they should turn their license in and go to selling insurance. <laughs> Zechariah 4 and 6, And the word of the Lord came unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Matthew 10 and 1, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of diseases. In Mark 16, 17 and 18, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, why is that? Because it's in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let's go to school and learn something else. Did you know that Christ is not Jesus' last name? Now, Lamb is my last name. Pastor, years ago, as a teenage preacher... A lady come up to me and she said, Brother Lamb, is that really your name? Or did you just change it, Angelique, to be spiritual? She thought I didn't really have that name. I wasn't really born with it. But here's the key. You see, Christ is not Jesus' last name. Rather, it is his title. The Greek word is Christos, which means the anointed one. So when you say in the name of Jesus Christ, you're saying in the name of Jesus, the anointed one. The one who is enabled with the power of God to do whatever miracle is needed at that moment. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Hallelujah. Luke 10, 17, in the 70, returned again with great joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Why? Because it's the anointed one, the name of the anointed one. Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you. Why is that? Because Jesus sent them out with the anointing. It was a breakthrough anointing. In Acts 1 and 8, but you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Spirit is come upon you and you shall be witnesses. And it lists all the different places. Ladies and gentlemen, when you really get a touch from God, you're not just going to fall out or laugh or shake or have joy, but you're going to go out and work the works of God. You're going to be bold in your witness. You're going to tell people on your job. You're going to tell people in your neighborhood. You're going to tell people of your friends at school. You're going to tell your family members about this Jesus who changed your life, who set you free, who put a song in your mouth, a cup in your hands, and a kick in your staff. You're going to tell it because you won't be able to contain it. You won't be able to keep it inside. Acts 3, 19, until the times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we must have the presence of God in our lives. That's why you need to go to every service you can at CRC to be in the presence of God. But it doesn't stop there. No, the presence of God should be real in your life every day of your life. And I'll talk about some more of that in a moment. Acts 4, 29, 30, and 31. And now, Lord, behold their threatenings and grant unto your servants 
that with all boldness we may speak your word by stretching forth your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done in the name of the holy child Jesus. And when they had prayed, somebody say prayed. When they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. There it is. When you get the breakthrough anointing, you will speak out. You will speak out and you will tell the wondrous things of the Lord to others. Jesus did not operate as the son of God. He became fully man. He divested himself of his divine attributes. He had to fast. He had to pray. He had the power of the Holy Spirit. Acts 10, 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil because God was with him. There it is again. When there's a breakthrough anointing in your life, you will work the works of God. Now, I love this. You know, tomorrow is Monday. Everybody say Monday. Monday. In most churches, Monday is the pastor's day off. And rightly so. They've worked hard on the weekend. I mean, Pastor Ott's about to wear me out doing all these services. But I'm having the time of my life. I love every second of it, I can assure you. But think about this scenario. Tomorrow, somebody calls CRC and they say, I'm demon possessed. I'm bound by alcohol and drugs. I'm bound by fear. I'm bound by lust and pornography. I need Pastor Boshoff to lay hands on me and pray for me. And the secretary or the receptionist says, well, I'm sorry, Pastor Boshoff is not here. This is his day off. Well, you know what can happen? All you've got to do is if you've got a janitor, think about this. If a janitor is saved, full of the Holy Spirit, has the anointing of God on his or her life, you can call up the janitor and say, hey, Mr. Janitor, or hey, Miss Janitor, we've got somebody bound by the devil, and we need you to pray. We need you to use your faith. We need you to share your anointing. And the janitor can come in and say, in the name of Jesus Christ, Satan, I command you, take your hand off of this man because he belongs to God. And every demon that's in Inside will have to flee because of the anointing. Woo, my goodness gracious. Y'all are about to make me preach myself to death. I need to preach myself to life. How about that? Now here's another interesting verse. 2 Corinthians 3, 17. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. I suggest... We interpret it this way. Where the Spirit is Lord, there is liberty or there is freedom. Lordship means master or ownership. Where the Spirit is in control. 2 Corinthians 3.18, we are changed from glory to glory. What is the glory of God? It is the manifest presence of God. In other words, God doesn't want you to just get touched. God wants you to get changed. So everything about you is different. You look different. You sound different. You act different because the anointing has come and has transformed your life. Now I could go on and on and on, but let's do this real quickly. Somebody say, I'm anointed. anointed. When you are anointed, You can accomplish things in the Holy Spirit that you could never accomplish on your own. No matter how much education you have. No matter how much money you have. No matter how many gifts and abilities you have. The anointing still makes the difference. Now, I don't fall out and die when I tell you this. But here are my points. There's four of them. But they're very, very brief. Somebody say brief. Brief. Write these down. Number one, you must seek for the anointing. Jeremiah 29 and 13, and you shall seek for me and you shall find me when you shall search for me 
with all of your heart. See, some people, they'll knock on the door one time. And if somebody doesn't come to the door immediately, they'll give up and go on down the road. But oh, when you seek for him with all of your heart, you're saying, God, I don't care how long I have to stay in that altar. I don't care what I look like. I don't care what I sound like. I don't care what anybody thinks about me. I must have more of you. I want the touch of God in my life. You got to seek for the anointing. Genesis 32, 26, Jacob wrestled with the angel of the Lord. He wanted the anointing so much that he declared, I will not let go until you bless me. Some of you need to start declaring the same thing. And he declared it to God. He was so determined that he wrestled with the angel of the Lord all night long. So it wasn't a little five minute prayer. And if he didn't get it, he gave up no all night long to the breaking of the day. And it was a violent struggle. The scripture says, and Jacob's hip was knocked out of his socket. And for the rest of his life, he walked with a limp. Oh, some people would say, well, God, why didn't God? God heal him. I don't know the answer to that, but I know this. Every time he walked with a limp, Jacob was reminded of that struggle, that fight, that divine encounter. When the anointing came mightily upon his life, he was marked by the presence of God all the rest of his life. Listen, where was I? Thank God for notes. He had a limp. He was marked. It was a divine encounter. Jacob named the place of his fight with God Peniel, which means for I have seen God up in the balcony. Hey, up in the balcony, for I have seen God face to face. And I know Bloomfontaine has a balcony. Hello, Bloomfontaine, you bunch of radical spirit filled Christians over there. He said this. Then it was life changing because God said, you shall no longer be called Jacob. This is how much he was changed. He even got a name change. God said, now you will be called Israel, which means a prince which has power with God. And ladies, we're not going to leave you out. You can be a princess that has power with God. He is no respecter of persons. Then in Exodus 33, 18, Moses was on Mount Sinai and he says to God, show me your glory. Again, glory is the manifest presence of God. And God said, I can't show you all of my glory. You couldn't take it. So God just showed him the hinder parts. Well, the reflection of God was so great upon Moses as he came down off of Mount Sinai. The Bible says that his face shine brightly like the brightness of the noon day sun. They had to put a veil over his face because it was so bright. You know what that says to me? You don't have to tell somebody you've been alone with God. You don't have to declare you've been touched by God. They can see it on your countenance. They can hear it by your speech. They can observe it by the things you do. They'll know that you've been alone with God and you've been touched by him. And while he was up there, Moses got a word from God. It was called the Ten Commandments. What do you think about that? Elisha cried out to Elijah and said, I want a double portion of the anointing that's on your life. In other words, I want a double dose of the Holy Ghost. Point number two, write this down. You must cultivate the anointing. Make a place for the anointing. Make room for the anointing in your life. Create an atmosphere where he's welcome. If you're watching the wrong kind of TV shows, if you're listening to the wrong kind of music, if you're hanging with the wrong kind of crowd, the Holy Spirit's not going to weasel his way in there. He wants you to create an atmosphere where he's welcome and where he is the center of attention. How do you do that? By spending time with him. By having fellowship with him. How do you do that? By fasting. 
God doesn't have to tell you to fast. He can tell you, but there's some things we already know to do. Fasting gets the flesh weak and gets the spirit strong. Prayer, meditation on the Word, praise and worship, getting an anointed service is like this one here tonight. Soaking in His presence in the altar, listening to your pastor's CDs, having a quiet time alone with the Lord, and even designating a secret place where you know that That's yours and God's place together. Somebody love him right now. Just wave your hands and stir up the Holy Spirit. I'm leaving stuff out, but that's okay. Point number three, write this down. You must make a demand on the anointing. 2 Kings 2.14, Elisha stretched forth Elijah. Hey, I get to use this now. See, this is going to be the mantle. Stretched forth Elijah's mantle and said, Where is the Lord God of Elijah? And when he took that mantle and threw it down there at that Red Sea, the Bible said that it parted. Actually, I guess it was, uh, the, uh, what's that river called? <laughs> Somebody help me out. The Jordan River, yes. Woo! He took it and struck the Jordan River. We'll edit that other part out before it's on Daystar, believe me. (laughs) Rachel, make a note of that. Edit out about the Red Sea because it was the Jordan River. Oh, I just wanted to see if y'all were paying attention. (laughs) No, I really just messed up. How about that? See, you never learn all this. You never arrive. You've got to always depend on God. You can never think, I can do this on my own. We've got to be dependent on Him. And the waters of the Jordan River parted. See, if I'd have just looked at my notes, I'd have got it right. And they walked over on dry ground. I wrote this down a while ago in the green room, although it's not green. The Lord gave me this for you tonight in this service. For you there in Bloemfontein. For you there in Cape Town. For you there in Johannesburg. For you there in Durban. And for all the other cities. Some of them are African names that I can't uh, uh, pronounce them. I'd have to really be anointed to pronounce them. (laughs) I'd have to pray for the interpretations. What the Bible says to do. But this is what the Lord gave me. If you make deposits in heaven then you have the right to make withdrawals. How do you make deposits in heaven? You do that with your faithfulness and attendance to church. You do that with your faithfulness and tithing, which is 10% of your increase that you give to God in your local church. You do that by your praise and worship time. You do that by your quiet time with the Lord. You do that by volunteering to do ministry in the church. When you do that, you're making deposits in heaven. And my God in heaven, when there's deposits up there, you can make a withdrawal when there's a need in your life or somebody else's life because you got deposits on hold in heaven. Matthew 9, 21, the woman with the issue of blood, like a blood cancer, had it for 12 years. Listen to what she said. She didn't say, if Jesus will call me out of the crowd and if he will prophesy over me or give out a message in tongues or or if he lays hands on me, then I'll be healed. No. She said, if I can but touch him. If I can just touch the hem of his garment, I don't even have to touch his fleshly body. If I just touch his clothes, there's enough anointing in Jesus' clothes for me to get healed, even though the doctors haven't been able to help me for 12 years. So that's the point. Too many of us, we're waiting around for Jesus to come touch us. You need to get up and go after Jesus. You need to pursue Jesus. You need to make up your mind. I'm coming to touch him. Hallelujah. You see, you don't have to wait. Here's a revelation. You don't have to wait to react to God. You can call, you should preach this. You can cause God to react to you. Somebody say amen. amen. Finally, so that's, you must make a demand on the anointing. Here's the final point. Write it down. This is an important one. We were in a Spanish country. I say, muy importante. That's not Afrikaans either. (laughs) Number four, you must guard the anointing. 
Proverbs 4.23, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it spring the issues of life. Now in America, the gold reserve for the United States is at a place called Fort Knox. You must guard the anointing like you would guard the gold at Fort Knox. Samson didn't guard the anointing if our musicians will begin to play. What was the result of Samson not guarding the anointing? You see, God's grace was so great and so often that Samson would get himself in a mess and then God would bail him out. But I think Samson began to take God's anointing for granted. He just began to assume it's always going to be there. God's always going to help me. Well, God will help you when you're doing the right thing, when you're living the right kind of consecrated life. See, Samson had a Nazarite vow and there were certain things that he was supposed to do and certain things he was not supposed to do. And God was even blessing him in spite of his disobedience. But finally, the grace of God moved on. You may not have ever heard a preacher say that before. But the grace of God moved on, at least temporarily, in Samson's life. Because he didn't guard the anointing, here's the result. He lost his strength. He lost his sight. He lost his freedom. And he lost his life. I don't want to end up like Samson. Joni right here is where Dr. R.T. Kendall would say, Samson was yesterday's man. I don't want to be... Pastor at boss shop. I don't want to be yesterday's man. I want to be today's man. You can be today's man. You can be today's woman. What area of your life do you need a breakthrough anointing in? Because there is a breakthrough anointing here today. Now I want to tell you the greatest miracle that I've ever seen in my entire ministry. And I've only told this maybe three or four times publicly. Because I don't want people to think that I think I'm all of that. Or that I'm the source of this kind of miracle. Because sometimes we look for things rather than to the God that gives us things. But I'm going to give you details because a lot of preachers exaggerate. Sometimes they will even borrow other people's stories. Pastor Boshoff, you're going to love this. Years ago, one of my friends who is a great evangelist. He had bought all of my tapes, and uh, he was preaching at a church. He did not know that Joni and I were going to attend. And we came in after he started preaching, because we didn't want to be a distraction at the beginning. And he was preaching my sermon, word for word. And Pastor At or Ot, I still don't know how to say it. Help me out here. I'll just say Pastor Boshoff. That's easier to say. How could a two-letter name be so hard to pronounce? I must not be anointed in pronouncing names. Help me with that, Lord. But he will get tickled about this when I tell this. He was telling an illustration that I had given about my dog. And all of a sudden, it became his dog and had the same name and everything. Just plagiarize my story. So I want to give you facts so you'll know this is not a made up, exaggerated, or borrowed story. It was in January of 1978. I was in West Monroe, Louisiana. I was preaching at the Church of God on Montgomery Street for Pastor J.C. Dudley. All of a sudden, towards the end of my message, on the far left, about two-thirds of the way back, a scream and a gasp came up from the audience. And I saw dozens of people scurrying to that location. It was very distracting. I thought, what could be happening 
right now. And then they came for me and said, please come quickly. We need you to pray. There was a man by the name of J.O. Strickland. He had a massive heart attack. And he had fallen over dead right there in the seat. You say, how do you know he was dead? Because, first of all, his daughter was there who was a registered nurse. She took his pulse. She said he has no pulse. He is not breathing. And he was already beginning to lose color. They had called 911. By the time I got down there, you could hear the sirens. You could even see the flashing lights through the windows. And God said, pray. And Marcus said, I don't want to do that. Because what if I pray and nothing happens? And God said, don't leave that up to you. It's not dependent on you. You just need to be obedient. If you need to speak in my name and you need to depend on my anointing to accomplish the work and leave the results up to me. You don't have anything to be embarrassed about. Well, I prayed the first time. Nothing happened. There was tremendous pressure on me because I'm thinking, oh God, what is going on here? What am I doing? What? I don't know how to pray for a dead man. And the Lord said, pray one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes you have to pray one more time. Sometimes you have to seek God one more time. Sometimes you need to fast one more time. Sometimes you need to worship one more time. Sometimes you need to give sacrificially to God one more time time and I prayed one more time and my eyes were closed very tight I was scared to death and I felt something move Woo, glory hallelujah thank you Jesus praise the Lord and God resurrected that man to life now you want me to tell you how sure I was about it I told you I've only told this like three times in my whole life. Well, the last time I told it was in May of this year. And guess where I told it? I told it in West Monroe, Louisiana, in the very city where it took place. Hey, you don't tell a made up story if you're telling it in the city where it happened. And right there in the audience, there were people who remembered that story, even J.O. Strickland's grandson, who was there to attest, yes, God raised my grandfather from the dead when Marcus Lamb prayed for him during that Holy Ghost revival. I want you to stand on your feet and I want you to begin to bombard heaven with praise in all of the campuses. Begin to praise Him. Begin to glorify Him. Begin to thank Him and call on God for a breakthrough anointing in your life. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what I feel led to do. I first want to give an invitation for people to get right with God. And then I'm going to pray for several people for a breakthrough anointing. I know one of the areas of anointing that's in my life. I don't know why it is. I certainly don't deserve it at all. But there is an anointing in my life, on my life for increase. And I'm going to pray for that anointing to be transferred to people here tonight. But you know what? Far greater than that is that you have a right relationship with God. Listen, it doesn't matter if you ever preach, if you ever sing, if you ever testify, if you ever become a missionary. If you have a right relationship with God, you can't do any better than that. And some of you, the devil is hard on your heels. He's hot on your trail. He wants to drag you down. He wants to bring you down. He wants to destroy you. You know why? Because you are God's sons and daughters. Now, you could, you could attack Pastor Boshoff. He would probably turn the other cheek. But you attack Nyretta, or you attack Angelique, or you attack Chanel, or you attack David. And I'll tell you, Pastor Boshoff and Rocco the Pitbull will be after you. 
He, he might turn one cheek, but then he'll say, God, I turned that cheek, but I'm not turning the other one. I'm going after the people that attack my family. So the devil knows that the best way he can get back at God, who is his mortal enemy, is to go after God's children. So he wants to deste- deceive you. He wants to lie to you. He wants to get you bound by habits and problems and difficulties. He wants to get you where you can't forgive others or you're bound by shame and you can't forgive yourself and you found yourself doing things and saying things and going to places that you never would have before and now you're living a secret life and you feel bound. And you think, what can I do? Well, tonight... God has brought you here for such a time as this. This is your moment, and this is God's time in your life. I'm not going to ask you to bow your head. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. If you love God enough, and if you believe in Him with all of your heart, and you say, I must get closer to God, and there are things in my life that I need to get right, If you feel that way tonight and you want to have a breakthrough anointing in your life, you first got to get your heart right with God. Then I want you to step out wherever you are. If you want me to pray for you, you need to be set free of something. You need to be delivered of something. You need to be forgiven of something. You need to be healed of something. Then step out from all over this building You and the other campuses step out and go to the altar where your campus is. Come, 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 come. In Jesus' name. In the back, on the left, on the right, on the main floor. You may be a visitor. You may be a member of the church. But if you need to pray, if you need to talk to God one more time in this life, I challenge you to step out in faith. Tonight you can be set free. Tonight you can be healed. Tonight your life can be transformed. They're coming, they're coming, they're coming, they're coming. God is speaking to you in Cape Town. God is speaking to you in Johannesburg. God is speaking to you in Bloomfontein. God is speaking to you in Durban and in the other campuses. Obey the Lord, obey the Lord. Come to the altar where you are. Yes, 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 yes. Tonight is your night. This is it. This is God's time. It's no accident that you're here. It's no coincidence. God knew you would be here. God said, I'm waiting for you. God said, I've got something, everything you need. I've got it. If you'll just come and receive it. Come and receive it. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. All right, listen to me. In America, we have a holiday called Thanksgiving. And you have a big dinner and all the family comes. And everybody feels welcome that's a part of the family. Well, this is your father's house. And this is his dining room table. And he's calling every one of his sons and daughters his creation. Whether you're in fellowship or out of fellowship or halfway in between, God is saying this altar is, this altar is available to every one of you. You're all welcome. What is the altar? It is the meeting place between God and man. Now, there's 11 more people that need to come. Anybody would be thrilled with this amount, but there's 11 more people. Some of you in the other campuses, you need to step out, come forward, and just say yes to God. Just say yes to God. Just say yes to God. 
saying yes to God is the beginning of a breakthrough anointing. Surrender is the beginning of a breakthrough anointing. A transformation, a revolution. Saying yes, saying yes, saying yes to Him. Say no to the devil. Say no to your flesh. Say no to your fears. Say no to your doubts. And say yes to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 This is so awesome. Hallelujah. All right, let's pray this prayer. They're still coming. We'll wait on you while I'm giving instruction. So awesome. So awesome. So awesome. So awesome. Hallelujah. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome in your Father's house. You're welcome to eat at your Father's dining room table. He's got a wonderful meal prepared for you. The bread of life and the water of life and the meat of God's Word. He's got it all prepared with your name on it. There's a place at your chair at the table with your name on it because He loves you. You're special to Him. Hallelujah. So all of you watching, yes, yes, yes. I'll tell you what, CRC, you are an amazing group of people. My, my, my. And I just pray, never take it for granted. Don't take your pastor for granted. Don't take this church for granted. Don't take the breakthrough anointing for granted. Don't take the presence of God for granted. Don't take the altar for granted. But say to God every day, Lord, it's so special. It's so valuable. It's so meaningful to me. I cherish it. I'm so thankful and grateful for all of it. I want you to pray this prayer. You that are in the other campuses, you can pray it out loud after me. On the internet, on television, watching by Daystar, pray it out loud after me. If for some reason you're bashful or shy, or maybe you think it wouldn't be appropriate because of where you are, just close your eyes, open your heart, and mean it. And God will hear it. Whether it's through your mouth or through your heart, He's going to hear it and He's going to answer So close your eyes and pray it after me. Dear Jesus, I love you today. And I believe you love me. I believe that you died on the cross. And you shed your blood for my sins. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. And I've made many mistakes. But I'm asking you to forgive me today. Come into my heart and life. Be the Savior of my soul and the Lord of my life. I accept you now by faith. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me. And thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. Now lift your hands and let's thank the Lord. Thank you for hearing your prayer. Thank you for forgiving you of your sins. Thank you for setting you free. Thank you for changing your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I need somebody to tell me what to tell them to go this way. All right. We have some wonderful prayer counselors. They're going to give you some uh, free literature. They're going to pray with you and you'll be back in the service probably in less than five minutes. If you really meant that prayer, then I want you to head to the, my right, to your left, and follow these pastors into a special prayer room. This is important. This is important. This is the second step of faith. So I want you to go with them. You'll be so glad you did, I promise you. You will be so glad you did. Oh, let's just give them a God bless you. Hallelujah. We encourage our...